Welcome to our next video in our Chapter 13 lecture series. In this video, we are going to be focusing then on analyzing residuals. Within the ANOVA test itself, when we've talked about this, we assume observations are normally distributed and independently distributed with the same variance for each treatment or factor level. So we need to check these assumptions, however. It's nice to make these assumptions, but if we do this big, huge test and all of these elaborate calculations, and we come up with something maybe groundbreaking, we need to actually go back and check these assumptions. So we can do that then by examining the residual values. And we've talked a lot about residuals, maybe a little too much, but with residuals then they help us figure out correlation and they help us check the adequacy of different models, right, by seeing how closely they fit to our predicted models. So we can do this check by examining residual values. So in the past we have found our individual residuals by using this formula, right? Where we say each individual value minus my y hat and that then gives me the difference between the predicted line I came up with and my actual value. In completely randomized design, y bar, which is my mean, equals y hat. So that then gives me this new residual value. So this residual then equals the difference between each individual observed value minus my mean or my average, okay? So remember I and J just deal with treatment and observation level minus I, which is my average, okay? So that then is going to be the formula we are going to use in the ANOVA testing where we have multiple treatments. So we can check these different assumptions using our residuals in a few different plots. So we can check our normality by constructing a normal probability plot of the residuals. We've had some different axes for probability plots. With our t distribution probability plots, we used a log normal scale, meaning my y-axis was logarithmic and my x-axis was linear. When plotting my residuals then, I'm just going to use a linear vertical axis, okay? So my y-axis is just going to be linear. Okay, so then I can check my equal variances assumption at each factor level by plotting the residuals against factor levels and comparing the spread in these residuals. Okay, so that sounds a little confusing. We'll do a graph in a minute. One way to think about this is we would plot residuals against y bar, which is called a fitted value plot, okay? So our last assumption then of independence can be checked by plotting residuals against the time or the run order in which it was performed. So when someone says, check the residuals, we are then going to plot these three different graphs or plots to analyze how things look. So we have a manufacturer that makes grocery bags and they want to try and improve the product's tensile strength, meaning if it can stretch more. So they think that the tensile strength then is a function of the hardwood concentration in that specific paper, okay? So we're going to go and we're going to run an experiment, okay? So we are going to say here's 5% hardwood concentration in these bags, here's 10%, 15%, and 20%. And I'm going to observe these right here, these for the 10%, these for the 15%, and so on. So I then have a totals column and an averages column. So then in order to calculate my residuals, it would look like this. So all I'm going to do then is I'm going to calculate the difference between my individual treatment average and the observation itself. So notice that formula we were looking at before was y minus y bar. So I'm going to say 7 minus 10 will give me this residual right here. And then if I look at this one, 8 minus 10 will give me negative 2. Okay, so I'm going to do that then for every single one of these values. On this line down here, I would then move to the next line of averages. So 12 minus 15.67 would be negative 3.67. Down here, 14 minus 17 would give me negative 3. So now, all of a sudden, I have this entire table of residual values, okay? So I'm then going to analyze the residual plots to check for these assumptions. So the first plot I'm going to do is a normal probability plot. So what I'm looking for on this normal probability plot of residuals then, I want to see if it about equates a linearly sloped line. Okay, so looking like this, that looks pretty darn good, right? We have a few little outliers maybe down here, but besides that everything else is pretty fitted along this line. 
Okay, next I'm going to plot the residuals versus my factor levels, okay? So I'm going to plot each individual residual against its factor level. So 5%, 10%, 15%, 20%, and then I'm going to plot these residuals along that value, okay? So notice this is just residual value along the y-axis. So these can be positive or negative. So if you come in here, I'm going to plot each residual. So this residual would be 0 at the 5% treatment. This one would be positive 1 at the 5% treatment. This one might be 5 at the 5% treatment level, okay? So we're going to plot each of those residuals at the 5, 10, 15, and 20% treatment levels. And then we're going to look at them. So we're going to look at a couple things. So we're going to look at the total overall residual spread. So from the bottom point to the top point. So we're going to look from there. Is that about equivalent to that one, that one, and that one, okay? That one might be a little smaller, but not hugely, okay? So then we are also going to look at the individual spread. So from here to here, here to here, here to here, and so on. So we don't have any huge gaps. I would maybe say looking at each of these lines specifically, this right here has my biggest spread, but that's still not like from here off the chart, okay? So my residuals are all within five of my zero, okay? So everything looks okay. So if I were to have huge differences between my smallest residual and my largest residual, or huge spaces of maybe 20 or 30, that would then maybe tell me I have outliers or something that doesn't really adequately fit within my model. Okay, so these points over here then, this right here is my overall average or my grand average, okay, or my grand mean. So I just plotted those on there so I could see what that looked like as well. Okay, so let's talk about this one. I find this one a little confusing, so I threw this table on there too. This then is a plot of the residuals versus Y bar. And when I say Y bar, I'm talking about each individual Y bar, okay? So that then, I threw up these averages right here. So I'm going to plot at 10, at 15.67, at 17, and at 21.17. So once again, I'm going to plot these residuals this way. Okay, so looking at the spread, and I plot them then at their individual treatments averages. So here's 5%, here's the 10%, the 15%, and the 20%, and their individual treatment averages, okay? So once again, we also threw my grand mean up there, which is 15.96, okay? So once again here, we're looking at the spread here, okay? the total spread and then the individual spreads. So here nothing looks too abnormal. So they don't really tell me any significant model inadequacy or anything wrong with our assumptions. So if you notice we didn't graph something dealing with our independence assumption and that then is because that one is based mostly on time and this example didn't have a time factor. So if you're dealing with time or specific order of things that one would matter, okay? And you want to check your independence in that case.